Rana, 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 Rana. And if you can actually name this movie, which features Herbie, then you'll know the car that my wife had as a kid and loved. Here we have the same distribution we were talking about before, but this time I'm interested in the expected value of x, which is going to be x e to the x. I'm going to need to use integration by parts. Not at all. Certainly not an ideal test question, but I can still work it through to get my expected value. Now let's talk about doing the second moment, which is done with an x squared here. Integration by parts again, and when we're done, we're left with x e to the x again, which requires integration by parts again. And sure, we can go through all that work, but wouldn't it be nice if there was some easier way of getting these moments, especially for these nasty types of distributions, which are very realistic in real life. So what we need is called a moment generating function. You'll notice it uses a t, and what we're going to do is take the derivative of this function, set t equal to zero, and that gives us the expected value of x. If you want the second moment, then you would take two derivatives and then set t equal to zero. The third follows the same pattern, three derivatives, set t equal to zero, there's your expected value of x cubed, and so on, to get as many moments as you want. And you might be thinking, there's probably an easier way to try to get some function to give you the moments, and in certain cases you'd be right, but this method works really well with a lot of the true common functions that are out there in real life, and it has some nice mathematical properties and works really well with some high-level proofs, so this is one of those vocabulary terms that you've been asked to learn. It's not a secret how to calculate this, but it does take a little more time to practice it than what we really have in this class, so don't worry about this. Instead, let's practice how to use this to get those moments. So for this example, it works out to be 1 over 1 minus 12 t, and it's too bad we're using t because it kind of looks like a plus sign, but there's 40 years of tradition going into this, so we kind of got to stick with the t here. If I want to find the first moment, then I'm going to take the derivative of this, where t equals 0, and you've got to recognize it's easier to do a derivative than an integral, set this at 0, and we get our first expected value of x being 12. So there's our first moment. The second moment, we need the second derivative. Well, we already have 1, so we just need the derivative of that. And I'll do these derivatives all day before I'm eager to do another one of those integration by part. Set this t to 0, and we get our second moment as 288. And we could do this all day. The third moment, or the fourth moment, this moment generating function becomes a factory to spew out these moments. <laughs> Let me give you another example. This is called the gamma distribution. Very useful in real life. But look at this thing. Nobody wants to integrate that. But if I told you the MGM was just 1 minus 2 t to the negative fifth, suddenly it's not nearly so intimidating to try to find the expected value of x by taking the derivative of that, setting t equal to 0, and my expected value of x is 10. This was so much easier than it would be to try to do the integration by parts over and over and over to get here. If I want to try to find the second moment, then I'm going to take the same thing I did before, except I'm going to take the derivative of the derivative I had, and now we get our second moment as 120. That can be very useful if we wanted to find the standard deviation using the exact same formula that we've been using the whole time. I hope you also noticed this is a lot simpler than the original f of x, and because knowing all the moments tells you everything you need to know about the probability distribution, this is one way that you could describe the gamma distribution. And you can see why I said there's higher level proofs where using the moment generating function is a big deal. But what do you need to know? You just need to know, take the derivative for as many times as you need that moment, set the t equal to zero, and then you'll have all the moments you want.